Hi everybody, Tommy here from Queers and Soaps. I just wanted to introduce you to some friends of mine who are about to embark on some fun soap opera discussion. So tune in and enjoy, and I will see you soon. Hi, and welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Eric, and that's my buddy, Bevan. Hi. We're bringing you some more Dallas episodes this week. Um, season two, episodes 11 to 15. Tommy over all the credits, and we'll begin. All right, so we start out with Triangle. Um, we have Garnet. Um, uh, I must point out that it's uh, Kate Mulgrew from Ryan's Hope and some Star Trek. Yeah, you watched that Star Trek with her. Yeah, I've seen a fair bit of it. Like over, the, I haven't um, what, ever watched it consistently, but it was like this um, thing. If it was on the Sci-Fi Channel, it'd be on repeat stuff like that. Yeah, Captain Janeway. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what uh, my friend Karen knew that too. She, she's like, yeah, she's on Star Trek. Um, so it looks like she knows Pam from the past. They yeah. have like a weird something. I don't know if they really go into it too much. I was. I got the impression okay. that it was just kind of like that they knew the similar people, you know, stuff like that. Like, um, you know, uh, she knew someone that probably like they'd been in, tra they traveled in the same circles, you know, stuff like that. Right. I guess they're on the same side of the tracks, like both, you know, she, well, Garnet, I think is looking for like a wealthy man. Well, Pam, you know, is Pam. So she was not really. I think like um, Garnet, like Garnet puts it down to like, she's just looking for her big break. You know, like, and um, yeah. she'll sort of do whatever she can to sort of get it. But I don't know if it's necessarily in the form of like, say, like hooking the man as much as as, as far as like, uh, I guess, in the same way that Pam's often like, you know, remarks are often made about Pam, where she's sort of like, oh, you secured like a rich husband. I think it's more like Garnet's far more sort of self interested than that. Like, I, I think, I don't know. I f I feel like she wouldn't. Marriage isn't really the, the the end goal, you know, it's just getting what she wants. Right. We found out a little bit more about Ray's story. He, he tells yeah. us about, like, he was running from the law and he was young and Jack hired him and he's pretty much, you know, grew up that way. I guess he was like a teenager when he got into some mischief or whatever. Um, he does mention Wait, so Gary, like, like, so with Gary being gone, like, they kind of took him on as, like, another brother, sibling, whatever. Yeah. Um. Well, Ray really feels like um, he has a yeah. place in it. That's, I think that's the thing. Like, he, even that scene where him and Garnet, it's like just, it's after the opening, you know, where like uh, Pam and Bobby have taken Lucy and her uh, very pretty boyfriend. What was his name? Joe. It was Joe. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. After, I don't yeah, think they made, made note of him because he was in it for like five minutes. I actually thought maybe he was another Jimmy, but so I listened for the name. <laughs> <laughs> I but thought no. so too because I thought I remember you and Tommy saying we're Jimmy's, but I think that was it for Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, only was. in two episodes as two different actors. You get the impression that Ray's kind of found his place. Like, so in that conversation where they're at, I think it's either I think it's actually Ray's place. I'm not sure. So, um, no, it's Garnet's. Beg your pardon. Um, and he's sitting in bed and he's just sort of talking about like like you said when he was young and everything like that, and that Gary's gone and yada yada. But like he's sort of at home there you know he feels like he belongs there and yeah. now that gary's been on he's got more of a place on the ranch yada 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 but yeah <laughs> and lucy seems to idolize garnet um but uh oh i have that jr and jack kind of like crush lucy's dream she's kind of like saying how she wants to be like garnet or like have a singing career and they're like no you need education no. <laughs> You better get them ideas out of your head, Lucy. Um, Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, Lucy's very jealous of Garnet in this because she's, I guess she's still on Ray. She's still hung up on Ray. I um, found Lucy's motivations in this episode to be very sort of Ray, weird. I didn't really know what to do with her. I like what uh, Pam says that Ray is a good man and that he deserves the best. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think that's <laughs> true. <laughs> I mean, him and Jr. like slept with two other women and the other one, and like he knows what a dirty dog Jr. is. I don't know. Just, 
I'm like, Pam doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like Pam doesn't know everything. She knows how Ray was with her and when uh, she dated him a couple of times. <laughs> That's, you know. Ray brings Garnet to some kind of giving party. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, pa Pam tries to blow her off. She talks about um, Pam getting a good Ewing. Because mm. I guess, you know, she wants a rich man, I guess. Like I said, a big break. Um, yeah, yeah. JR asks Ray about Garnet. Um, and Ray says that he loves her. JR's like, sure you are. <laughs> he don't. Yeah, don't give dismisses it. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, just dismisses it completely. <laughs> Ray tells Jock that he wants to marry Garnet. And he's been through, and we find out that he's been with the Ewings for twenty years. It's a long time. Yeah, it is. So, so Jr. and Garnet are working out a deal. Like she, he basically has her sign a contract, or he's got he. Ta they talk about a contract because later on, I think he goes over with it. Um, I I don't know exactly how the deal fits in with anything. Like, did you get that? So, I mean, you mean his deal with Garnet? Yeah. Okay, so basically he lures Ray away with the fake the fake business and he brings Garnet in pretty much immediately after that scene where Ray confesses the big love and wants to marry her. Um, and JR is going to use a connection uh, that he has through a record label. He's going to essentially fund her career and as as long as he gets originally i think he said 25 percent of all earnings from any source and she basically says 10 and he gets exclusive rights to her services for as long as he wants so um okay it's more I think, yeah, yeah i, I think it's like with that. i don't just I, more of a, I think it's more of like a sleazy way for jr to get what he wants like officially and like you know like have it all in writing so she gets what she wants sort of thing but i also think it's just sort of like a plot device yeah. for lucy to come along later you know i do really think that that there is a bit more of a plot device but what so lucy comes in lucy comes in to try and convince him to like oh you know if you convince granddad granddaddy and you sorry you'll be able to convince jock and miss ellie that you know my career choices are aren't stupid sort of thing oh, right. and he's basically yeah he's basically like no lucy you know that's crazy and um she's like well you know what would happen if i, I forgot told to make note that it was lucy <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was lucy she came in being lucy and tries to hit him with a blackmail uh yeah. you know looks at the contract because she's already come across it well what if i told right. um ray or um, Sue Ellen. And then JR comes back with that line of like, why Lucy Ewing? Are you trying to blackmail old JR? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and he said, um, uh, she's a scheming little tramp like her mama. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and then he goes to Garnet and they bang. <laughs> um, Miss Ellie and Sue Ellen and chat about JR not being there because he's, you know, cheating all the time, so he's never home. And Sue so Ellen doesn't seem to care because she has her own shit going on. So she's like, whatever. Well, there's that um, bit there where, like, there is that tiny little bit there where Miss Ellie sort of, like, very much, like, it's like those weird, ex it's those weird telling faces that all these characters do when they're not actually talking about something. Like, Miss Ellie, it's sort of just like your very understanding wife, Sue Ellen. You know, I'm not sure a lot of other people would be like that. And it's just like, mm, can we all just talk about this, please? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? No, they, they don't like communication <laughs> in this family. So yeah, Garnet tries to get JR out. He wants her to dump Ray. They kiss, and she's basically making a deal with the devil. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Jack is mad that he didn't get the bull that he wanted. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I guess they were trying. I'm to wondering it. why he was. If, why? Uh, um, was, why was something? Luke, why was this rumor around? Blah blah blah. If the guy wasn't willing to sell, and then you know, Ray's just kind of like, Whoop. yeah. Um, Lucy goes to Ray's, comes on to him. Then she mentions about Jr's with Garnet. Um, Pam hears them. Pam runs up to Bobby, uh, up to oh. the office of the room or something, I think it is, and she's just like, Ray's after JR. He's gone to see Garnet. And Bobby's like, oh, crap. It goes in. He sees JR. 
punches him and strangles him. Bobby comes in right after, rips him off JR. Um, and Ray kind of goes off on him. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. actually, I think I wrote it down. I'm like Ray gives, yeah, Ray gives JR uh, one of the first of many beatings to come. <laughs> Seriously. It is, man. That guy gets hit so much. Almost as many times as um, gets shot. I guess. I guess JR made like a comment to Garnet, like, but she's like, uh, we signed a contract and it's legal, so don't try getting out of it. So I guess he was going to be like, well, you know, trying to send people away all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bobby feels bad, tells Ray to stay because he was. Ray's talking about leaving South Fork. JR comes in, he says, I want you off South Fork. Um, oh, God. Ray says he's staying. He pretty much, uh, it's almost like Ray stays because JR tells him to leave. So it's almost like in spite. And plus, you know, um, yeah, he, it's, yeah, it's That's the whole think. thing. Of, yeah. But it sort of gave Ray a little bit of a moment to shine because he doesn't really get too much yeah. sort of main focus for a while. I also think like, um, I still like this, this has to be one of the more confounding episodes with for me for Lucy in the early years, because she's sort of like jumping on the bandwagon being like this teen, like, Oh, I just want to like, become a singer and like all that. And you're like, oh yeah, I can sort of get that. But she's still kind of like weirdly trying to control Ray and stuff. And I'm like, but there was no sort of establishment for this outside of an affair from last season that they have kind of not really gone into outside of when Lucy's kind of just being bratty. Like this is the first time she actually seems like sort of like they're trying to do that manipulative, the proper the manipulative vixen thing. And I don't know, it just see, makes yeah. her motivation for the episode really flip floppity and weird. Like her, th and at the end, where she, like the most <laughs> Lucy thing of that situation is that she told Ray about JR, uh, JR and Garnet. That is the most Lucy part of the situation. But the rest of it is like this weird, it's like, I just feel like they didn't know what the hell they were right. doing with her in the episode. But like, I mean, it was still fine. It was just weird. Yeah. So our next episode is Fallen Idol, episode 12 of season two. Um, Jay, we, we get Jeb back. JR is talking to Jeb um, about, yeah. I guess, whatever, the drilling shit. Um, uh, what was it? And this uh, one was another uh, one. Oh, go ahead. It was the panhandle, the panhandle salt fault or salt, salt mound or whatever. Apparently there is some drilling thing that those three are involved in and it's hitting um, Ames in the pocket a little bit more than he'd like and they're feeling a little insecure over the type of um, in, uh, backup or reserves that they have and so they bring up section 40 again which I friggin brought up earlier when I'm out of place um, and wanting to confirm that there is as much as the old reports sort of um, indicated because apparently the re reports by the sounds were done like when jock was a young man so they right. you know what 30 40 years prior they want new ones yeah, to all the business stuff it's like business stuff comes along business stuff comes along and i'm like i just tune out i'm like <laughs> uh, yeah, but um it's, it's i've mainly started to focus <laughs> more on it since we started because you said that you don't so i'm like okay i've got to listen for that stuff then so <laughs> <laughs> which is cool like i don't mind I know. I in one part you. coming up i'll I actually wrote I, I actually wrote your name coming up so there's something i didn't pay attention to and i'm like bevin <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute yeah. so um bobby is walking down the street i guess like outside of the company and some football kind of flies at his head and he like catches it and it's this classmate from college named guzzler <laughs> Um, which is his nickname. I forget his real name. I didn't write it. They mentioned like when Gary left and stuff that that Bobby was like, you know, he was there for Bobby in his time of need, pretty much. Well, Gary's the one that Bobby um, told. Yeah, and Bobby asks him to stay with them at South Fork. Well, he insists. Yeah. Because you know it's his best friend. Yeah. Um, Jr's meeting with Jeb. They talk about the red file again. It's coming. They're building this it's red file shit up. I was actually getting keen uh, to this. I'm something like, about, oh, this up. Some, something about, they mentioned, like, uh, secretly digging oil on South Fork somewhere. Because South Fork's huge, I guess. And I guess, you know, nobody runs over. I don't know. Um, 
Whatever. So, and he said he basically says, "Bring out the oil man and don't let Mama see." <laughs> oh, that. Okay, so they want yeah. the um. They Jeb Ames wants his own men, not JRs, to go out there and basically test the well to see how how pro, uh, how much pro, uh, product they can get out of it. But he wants his own people to do it. And so JR, right. JR sort of, so I actually like JR in this whole sort of thing. He's kind of really appeasing them, but working them at the same time. So he's he's confident at this point, there's no, not too much danger, but he's just kind of giving them what they want to within a reasonable degree. This obviously changes a bit later in the episode, but I like how he kind of is like, okay, you guys want this confirmation, fine, keep it to yourself. Right. If my mum finds out that actually will, you know, screw things up. Yeah. I have that Guzzler meets Pam. Yeah. Um, and then he meets, well, he sees the family again. I guess he was familiar with them from the past or whatever. He's telling stories or whatever of how fun college was, I guess. Everybody seems to be loving his stories, except for Pam. She has this weird look on her face, like, I don't trust and this JR. fucker. JR doesn't lie. Yeah, yeah. Lying. And JR, <laughs> this is like one of the few times that JR and Pam actually agree on something. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like uh, I like that Sue Ellen says that she finds them fascinating. I feel like she only said that because she knew Jr. didn't like them. Yeah, because it's um, right. Yeah. The one thing I love about that little bit is because it's right mm-hmm. after Jr.'s just like, "I'm gonna go upstairs. I can't handle the constant name dropping." Next thing you know, it's gonna be Farrah Fawcett Guzzler. And I just, <laughs> yeah, just that was funny. And that's good. <laughs> and you know, I always do love a Farrah. Or faucet, um, you know, mention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then she gives Cl- uh, she gives Cliff a call because she's you know been seeing him. Guzzler gives Bobby some advice. Um, he needs help kind of with his construction. Guzzler says okay. Um, Guzzler says it seems to have other things going on, but I don't know if it's true or not, and I still don't even after this episode. They're not. Um, they're not. They're not. They're lies. So um, he comes in saying he's got these big Venezuelan development deals going. He just happens to be in land development now, just like Bobby is after being in oil. And he goes right. to show Bobby, Bobby goes to show him that in uh, the I think it's that cost uh, the low income housing or whatever that he was building that tract. So like the sorry affordable housing project or whatever that he was doing, and they show you that big sort of like development strip. And Guzzler is just like, oh, you're not doing what you can. You've always you you know. You, you sort of get into things and you're always like basically the best straight away and you're not uh, leaving your legacy. And like, that's how they get yeah. sort of talking about it. And then Bobby sort of like um, offers a partnership and saying like, well, I need the experience of these people. And Guzzle's just like, oh, I've got my high-rise Venezuelan deal. I'd have to tell them. Blah, blah. It's just fucking shit talk. <laughs> <laughs> it is so... all shit talk. They go out or whatever, and he, they come in at like three in the morning. Pam's sitting up; she's not happy about it. Um, because they're wasted. Guzzler brings Bobby upstairs, and he, and yeah, and he comes on to Pam, and she kicks him out heavily. He's um, like, "You smell like flowers." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> I know, I know, but, and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> um, yeah. And so I guess like the next day or whatever, Guzzler says he's sorry for keeping Bobby out late. He's totally acting like he didn't come on to Pam. Um, yeah. And this is where I have your name. I have your <laughs> so it says, I have JR sees the guys on the land with the oil. Jeb tells, or, or Jeb's around, so go on about that. So what are they doing there? They're just trying to dig up oil. Okay, so they, I, yeah, I actually wrote this down like the actual amounts too, because I, um, the, uh, the surveyor was very specific about the production. <laughs> right. So, um, they can fill, so Jeb Ames, uh, you know, surveyor, or whatever the hell he is, um, says that the, uh, results that they've got coincide with the, um, old day reports. They can, f- ah, that's what it was. They can fill a hundred gallon drum tank or whatever in 20 minutes which is 7,000 barrels a day and um, so and then for the I think for the audience sake to give them that perspective the guy turned around and he's like directly that is a big deep well you know with lots of money in it basically and Jeb turns around he's just like well JR with that in reserves I'm more than happy to put all my money into this one project that is currently not producing so like 
Yeah, because their biggest concern with that was that there was multiple drill points on the panhandle thing. I think that's what they called it. Um, but they ha- it had all been dry so far. Now, they're so, illegally doing this, correct? Um, I'm not sure about that one. So the illegal part, it's not really, well, it's not really illegal for them to sort of come on to, especially because they've got JR's permission, they've come on to South Fork land to check out the well, which right. isn't so much like illegal in of itself, but JR will get into the shit because like that, that well was capped since the days of his grandfather. Right. That's well, that's the, what I mean. Nobody cleared it with Miss Ellie or Jock. So, yeah, I mean, she could get him for trespassing or something like that, but unless they were, yeah, she, they, it wouldn't really be, I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's trespassing, I guess, but I wouldn't know if it's like illegal, right. illegal, not yet anyways. Um, but it's definitely secretive because JR, JR, uh, was it? Cause I think later on, or it's in this episode, I can't remember when, but Jeb Ames actually mentions that he think that he thinks that J- uh, Jock's will might be a forgery. Uh, yeah. So I don't actually, I think I might've been right in the other, ep- uh, that other episode a couple of weeks ago that they don't actually realize that the red Fall contains a forgery of Jock's will. Right. Yeah. All kinds of shit. So Bobby tells Pam that he and Gosler um, are going to be partners. She is not happy. Um, mm-hmm. He basically tells her that she's jealous of him, which is funny. And she's like, go play with your friend. Uh, I love how <laughs> she gets. She's like, competing with Gosler. I'd have been the same. I'd be like, I ain't competing with that. Mm. <laughs> and, and Bobby talks that he wants to build shops on South Fork. Um. Mm. I put Lucy seems to be crushing on Guzzler, which was gross. And he seems to be like into it too, which is still bothers me. Like she's not, she's 17. Like, and she's doing that weird, there's that weird conversation. Um, like, oh, did, you ever, like, did you ever meet any girls like me when you were overseas? And it's just like, what the hell? Yeah. Pam mentions the Bobby that. Pam mentions to Bobby that she doesn't like what Bobby's become since uh, but Guzzler came along. Mm. I guess he's reverting to his college days, you know, just like, you know, not caring about anything. Um, so then um, Guzzler gives like the sob story. Like Bobby's like his brother. And then she seems mm. like she's warming up to him a little bit after this, like. Yeah. Very temporarily, I guess. She says she doesn't like how Bobby is with him and the way he is with women puts her off too. Um, He explains that Bobby is essentially a brother to him. He comes from a distant family and was an only child. He has a bit, uh, he was a bit older than Bobby. So he took the older brother role. Pam softens despite this really having nothing to do with anything or why she was mad at him. And the scene just sort of ends. Because it is all that. She's, <laughs> she's spoken with Lucy and makes comments about it. She's annoyed at the fact that Bobby is constantly drinking and carrying on and being out. And she's also worried about the fact that he now seems to seemingly wants to go into business. And when Guzzler does some sort of like, my daddy didn't love me story. And suddenly she's just like, oh, I didn't know there's this other side to you. And it's like, okay, let's yeah. see how this plays out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what? <laughs> it's funny it's kind of funny like these episodes are kind of full of like random people that like it almost seems like they would be around again but they never come around again like the last yeah. one garnet we never see her again mm. guzzler we never <laughs> see him again <laughs> it's like no. it's kind of funny um so jock tells bobby that if he can't drill on south fork that he can't build a shopping center there this cracked mm-hmm. me up and then jock says that he can and he talks to Miss Ellie. Um, Miss Ellie says to let Bobby build, which I was surprised about because you well, know how she is obsessed was... with her land. Yeah. So, but like at least Miss Ellie was consistent. She actually sat there and thought about it, and she's just like, "Okay, but I love my son, and he really wants this." Jock is like, "No, then yes." <laughs> so oh, this the... is funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The plot of land that Bobby wants to build a shopping center on is section 40 that has the well on it. So the reason why Jock Jock considers it is because he sees the shopping center as an extra layer of security that nobody can work around after he dies because he's got the same clause in his will that Grandpa Southworth did that no one is allowed to drill there. Right. Yeah. And then they... 
they jab it and they get to find out they get pissed off right and then they threaten him and he slaps them they are yeah, slaps them, <laughs> which is so funny because like i didn't even see that coming but it was funny I actually thought that uh, I beg, beg your pardon. I forgot his name. He said it before, but Jeb Abrams as actor actually sold that slap quite well. He was just like, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, yeah, it was great. And I love Jr. in that bit. There, it's that you know he's such a pr prick pretty much most of the time. But it is nice to see him kind of back his family up once in a while. <laughs> right. So this is the first and probably only time I think we see Jr. and Pam do lunch together. <laughs> they go, yeah. they yeah. meet up. <laughs> And he basically wants her to stop Bobby's project from happening. Yeah. And she's like, no. Um, Miss Ellie feels overwhelmed. Pam goes to Guzzler, talks, talks about authorities investigating him. I guess he's wanted for so something. JR, he must have did some shady shit. Yeah, so JR, uh, JR comes to her with a file that, oh, excuse me, um, JR comes with a file at the lunch and basically summarizes it for the audience because Pam doesn't bother to read it. And um, <laughs> it's, um, so he had a, I think like a office, like a deal to do, to construct office buildings that fell through before the foundations were even laid. And then he went into Montana for another um, lucrative land deal that he skimped out on as well. Both being sort of held, the, both partners kind of being left with the bag, essentially the debt and um yeah like so there's no there is no high-rise venezuelan buildings for instance that's all you know a story right. um yeah and so she and he she goes well you know i don't really trust you why would you even bother telling me this and he's just like well bobby's not going to listen to me yada 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 you know um <laughs> yeah but essentially yeah guzzler's sort of like uh being investigated, or at least um, his prior projects are still being investigated. Right. Um, she basically calls him a liar, I guess, with this proof. Um, he yeah. tells some kind of other sob story. He always got something going. Those um, people are... Yeah. You know what's hard about those people, just on a side note, and I think this narrative actually does it really well, is that it's like that mix of lies and truth. So, yeah, I actually kind of believed that this little cat, like his little summary about where he was in his life is probably fairly accurate. It's probably why he does what he does, but you're still doing what you do, bro. Right. You know what I mean? And I find people in real life, not quite as eloquent when they're sitting there talking about it, but um, right. I think people do a lot in real life. And it's funny. She goes to Bobby and tells him, and he says, I already knew. <laughs> yeah. But like all of this for that. Guzzler says he's got to go. Bobby tries to keep him there. Because Bobby just wants his friend around. He doesn't give a fuck that. You know, I mean, never see Guzzler again. Good night. <laughs> he probably died lying about some Venezuelan deal. Yeah. So the next episode is episode 13 of season two called Kidnapped. Ooh. Who will be kidnapped? Uh, um, and wow. I, I made note that in the beginning, they start showing also starring Ken Kerchival. They did, um, yes. Yes. So this is where that starts. So I believe season three is where he's officially added to the credits. Yeah. I always remember, because I feel like he's in it enough to be in the credits now, but they never have him on, but whatever. Maybe they just had him for like planned for like certain arcs over the first few years, and then obviously he's just a cliff. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like he just, yeah. So they're having breakfast inside today, so I guess they're on set. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we get a Sue Ellen, a Sue Ellen mentions her mom and sister. They come mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Um, JR says, see you tonight. Sue Ellen says, oh, you're coming home? <laughs> and he has this look on his face like, like what? The fuck? what? It's yeah, true. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> um, oh, and then here I have note that um, the girl who's playing Connie, her name is Nancy Blear. Mm -hmm. Um. She was in one episode of Knots Landing. Ah, uh, yeah. But I must say, I don't know if I know. I don't know if you know of the Bionic Woman series, unless I mentioned it to you before. But she was a fembot in the Bionic Woman series, which I thought was fun. I know this. With, I know of the series. I've never really watched it. Well, it's amazing, <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because in the next episode we're going to talk about, 
There's another fembot. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we start out. People are watching the Ewing house. We don't know who these people are. It's two men and a woman. Yep. Um, then they then they show them, like, looking at slides of everybody. I'm like, where did they get these slides from? Who's taking these pictures? Like, they can't have, like, they're doing it for money, so they can't, like, it was real weird, whatever. I guess we're just yeah, supposed to be like, it. oh, they have slides of these people. It would make, like, more yeah, sense well, if they had, like, newspaper clippings. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, cut out newspaper, whatever. But Especially, anyway, they had yeah. slides, and, like, the slides look like they were, like, pictures taken from, like, the first season. <laughs> whatever. I actually thought like, the first two or three were fine. Like one actually does look like Sue Ellen's kind of just been caught by the camera. She's walking across the street. Like she's just noticed it and she, cause her face <laughs> is very like plain and like, you know? Um, and then you've got like literally just stock photos, like cast photos. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, if we look hard enough, I bet you they're in the episodes that aired all of these. Photos. <laughs> there's an, uh, there's a guy named Al as one of those people. And he's like, he mentions like no more killings, right? So I guess they killed people before. They um, killed someone. And, I can't remember the name now. And the lady says, as long as everyone does what they're told. <laughs> yeah. So I think, the main notes, I think the main notes I made on the episode was the to the names of the kidnappers, which was Al, Will, and Faye. Faye. You know, I didn't catch her name. I was trying to and they I didn't catch it. Like they say it like I think maybe twice in the whole episode, and it's not even at the start. Uh, I think Bobby's is the one that says it too. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, it was stupid. I was like, why am I finding out this character's name thirty-five minutes in? I don't know if it's that long. <laughs> it <was> a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like I call her a woman. Actually, I call them trio because they're basically the, together most of the time. Yeah, there's very um, few scenes, but. So they show Bobby, like, he's working on his construction um, project, whatever. Um, he goes to the his car. Um, and JR and his hoe are in bed. <laughs> and then I put, she's a good hoe. <laughs> oh, but, all I was going to say is I'm pretty sure that that woman was involved with Willie Joe Gar because he says something about it. He says something like, oh, Willie Joe can wait another, like, half an hour or something, and he starts to kiss her. So I'm pretty sure that that's supposed to be Willie Joe Gar's missus. Yeah, I didn't remember that. It was just like a throwaway yeah. line, and I was like, Yeah, when she's oh, like, funny. Is Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I could be wrong, but like, um, so Willie Bobby Joe leaves the trio follow him. They cut him off, and they hold the gun on him. They take, they basically kidnap Bobby, so he's the one that gets kidnapped, but they really wanted JR, but whatever, they don't get him. Yeah. Um, they have him chained to a bed, and, and I also made note that this lady scares me. <laughs> it's creepy. She's very into Bobby from the beginning, and you can um, see it. <laughs> they want to involve Cliff as a go-between um, to, I guess, leave notes for him to go tell the Ewings what's going on. Um, yeah. They tell him they have Bobby and all that stuff. Um, Pam's looking for Bobby. Cliff comes over. He tells him the news. They got the note. Um, Pam wants them to do exactly what the note says. JR wants to do whatever the fuck he wants and probably get him killed. You know, that's what yep. he does. Um, which is so funny to me. So, Ray and JR seem like they had no issue in this episode. When in that Garnet episode, he was like, you know, like all nasty to him and like, I'll never, whatever, ever again. It's because whatever bobby's life i think it's literally just, yeah i think it's literally because bobby is being kidnapped like he could die that's the oh that's my logic for it is like okay so that makes yeah sense. and i like the little cliff and sue ellen moment um and then they kind of they're like he's like how are you and they're whatever and then they kind of like put on an act in front of jr as he comes in they're like uh, she's like oh hey mr barnes how you doing <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah. um Cliff goes to the drop. He gets a note and a picture of Bobby. JR says he gives the orders. And, and Pam blames JR. So um, JR contacts the FBI. JR con I'm pretty sure JR contacts oh, right. the FBI. Yeah, and he screws up the drop because they were supposed to give the money to the kidnappers and get Bobby. But I, yeah, something yeah. happens there. And... I think it's Al. It's, no, it's Will. I think the blonde one who gets all spooked and brings him back, and um, 
you know, they're like, well, we could have had the money and left, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, no, I was, you know, sus on this and that, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, your guts are gone since you shot and murdered that guy or whatever. And they basically throw that shit in his face. Right. Um, yeah, essentially, JR calls um, the actual authorities and, um, yeah, Pam and Cliff kind of lose it a little bit because, um, yeah, we they don't know what's going to happen next, essentially. Yeah. Um, Bobby tries to escape with this chair i don't know what he's trying to do with it because it's like a wooden window i don't know what's happening um Doesn't that's what priest lady it. comes in talks about talks about you don't know what it's like to be poor and she'll do everything anything she's got to do for money and then she fights with him and then she kisses him <laughs> yeah bobby promises them promises them whatever you know whatever they want he'll do yeah everything will be cool jr's in his safari jacket I just made note of that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Cliff and Pam have a nice moment. She's scared. And she's like, you, you like him now, don't you? He's like, yeah, I like him. And then like, they get broken up by whatever. Um, then we're at the meeting point. The I have the trio brings Bobby. Cliff brings the money. Says he's glad to see him. And they're like, you know, whatever. Don't, they're not done quite yet. Um, JR and JR and Ray and like a bunch of other men are in the fields with guns. Bobby mm-hmm. runs back uh, to Cliff to take them down because they just start shooting the guns when they think Bobby is clear, but they didn't know if Cliff was really clear. They just started yeah. shooting. I thought that was awesome. I I love this is why I love Bobby so much because like he didn't even care. He ran right and took Cliff down, you know, to the ground. Yeah. Um, we find out Will Will is dead. The other two. I guess you know didn't get shot because I guess everybody has a bad aim. <laughs> Cliff attacks Jr. He says he says you were both in the clear. Pam says like sounds to me like Cliff was almost killed this after or this morning. He's like with me there. He was he was never safer in his whole life. <laughs> yeah. Like what a fuck. Yeah. I did like that little bit at the end. I, I did enjoy that. And just when Cliff goes off at him, JR's just like, well, the way he plays it, and he's like, what are you talking about? These men are crack shots. You are never any danger. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was, a, that was a really filler episode because there was like nothing major happening. I do like the Cliff moments. I always love seeing Cliff. He was good in this one. Yeah, it was a little banter between the Ewings and Cliff and stuff like that. Um, so, I didn't actually mind that. So, one. episode. Episode. Episode 14 um, is home again. Um, Miss Ellie and Sue Ellen are open in the nursery. They talk about how the baby, hopefully the baby's like JR, Miss Ellie's saying. I'm like, yikes. I hope not. <laughs> um, then we get to meet Garrison. Well, man, I don't think we know he's Garrison yet, but we know he's Garrison. Um, yeah. It's Ellie's brother. And the lady named Kathy who is Melinda Fee, who I told you about. She is the one that was a fembot as well with the uh-huh. other girl who, yeah, who okay. passed away in 2020. And this girl, she was in, a, she's a big soaper. She was in um, the soap Love of Life, Guiding Light uh-huh. in the 70s. She played Jill Abbott yeah. temporarily on The Restless. Oh, um, nice. She was in Days of Our Lives for a year, Beverly Hills 90210, and Flamingo Road. Oh, okay. So she... She gets around, yeah. Yeah. So they get this painting or whatever, and he gets upset on Garrison, um, whatever. So um, I think, is this when they go to the house? Wait, hold on. Yeah, so um, basically the painting Ellie. delivered. Paintings delivered to the house. Um, we see Garrison, right. obviously, at the start. He complains about, like, oh, it's, it's terrible, and she- She's like, no, it's, uh, Kathy's like, no, it's pretty good, actually, considering it's from an old snapshot, yada, yada, yada. He's like, send it to Ellie Ewing. No, Garrison, you need to take it to Ellie Ewing. And he's like, grumble, grumble, and then agrees. And that's kind of where we open (laughs) up to Bobby answering, I think it's Bobby, yeah, answering the door. Yeah, Bobby answers the door. Um, And then, yeah, he gets a... Oh, he gets upset by a paper that, or he finds out that Ellie married Jocks, and he's upset about it. This is 40 years later, too, by the way. I'm like, dude, really? Um, yeah, he's like, looks so, like Jock. Got it. 
<laughs> right. So Ellen calls Cliff, and I put so cute. She calls, <laughs> so she makes a call. I think of it like a payphone or whatever, and she's like, uh, "What's your favorite color?" She's doing the nursery, and she wants like his involvement, you know, because she thinks it's his baby, and so does he, right? Now, yeah, kind of. So cocky. Um, they come up with pale yellow. I'm like, that's nobody's favorite color. What if? I guess that was a favorite color in the '70s. <laughs> Jock and Ray are out checking things out, and they find the puddle of of, of um, crude oil. Um, so this, is where, this is where, like, the thing... It's so funny to me, because, like, these little things are happening through these episodes, you know? It's very... Um, on continu- yeah, it's building, anyway. building. They also got a report, too, that um, I think one of the ranch hands saw a tanker out there, and he's like, oh, what the... Mm. What's the... Goes to tell Ray. Ray and Jock are like, Jock's like, hmm, that's weird. We go out and check, and there's that puddle. All right. Yeah, yeah. And the um, screws on the actual well itself are something like that. They look fresh, or, or something Jock says. Yeah. And they see, they look at the thing. I don't know what it's called, but it's like the, the screwy thing. And he, he says, it looks like I have the thing he was tankered with. <laughs> Jock's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Um, There's like and he goes to question JR ground. because he's suspicious, and JR is like, oh, well, it could be like vandalism. Um, it's too close to the highway. It could be vandalism. could be anything, Daddy. Yeah. yeah. Ellie yeah. opens the painting. It's a picture of, like, the old South Fork Ranch, I guess, back when we saw the TV movie. I wrote TV movie. I um, mean, was it, though? Because it looks like a smaller house than the TV movie house. Well... Well, you got to remember the TV movie was after, so they probably just like you know whatever. That's they true. Probably the TV movie house, the TV movie house exactly reminds me of Pam's house in like season seven and eight, like Pam's sort of big house that she has those bloody columns on. That's what oh, that yeah, like yeah. That house reminded right, right. me of from the movie. Yeah, but anyway. So apparently, like Garrison comes in, she thought he was dead because his ship went down, and she thought he drowned. And like, yeah, like I said, forty years ago. And he mentions the dying cattle. He said he left because of like everything going on with the fighting and um, the the dying cattle. And I'm like, TV movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it that. was the responsibility. It was the responsibility. Talked about Digger. He was mad about that because um, he was friends with Digger, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, Digger was just a mess, a drunken, you know. It, I always tried to root for them, but like, it's impossible to root for, for someone like I think, that. I think it's that thing um, of like, Digger was never a bad guy. Uh, Digger was never really a bad guy. He just got so embittered and drunk. He's just drunk, you know. It's one of those people that is actually yeah, ruined yeah, by exactly. their. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, they mentioned um, that Bobby and Pam are. Married. And he's like, and, and she says, um, she's Digger's daughter, and he's like, I bet, I bet you choked on that one, Jock. <laughs> I do love the face he gives him. It's like, yeah, I did. Like, it's almost like, yeah, he's like, mm, with this bourbon. That's what I was gonna say, Scotch, but it's bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> and he basically says he came back because he wanted to see the ranch again because he hasn't seen it in forty years, and he wanted to see Miss Ellie, of course, it's his sister. Yeah. Um, Jock and JR think that he's there to take the place away from. I actually like that bit because there's a bit there where Pam and Bobby Basically. are talking and they've been really sweet about I have Bobby it. Bobby and, and Pam being just, cute. Yeah, and then they switch to JR and Sue Ellen, and JR's like, he's going to yeah. be here. For something. I'm swear he's going to be here for something. And Sue Ellen's just like, well, he's not threatening my child's inheritance. And like, <laughs> it's just the dynamic. Like, Pam and Bobby <laughs> are so sweet, and JR yeah. and Sue Ellen, it's like they're playing games. But yeah. I know, it's, yeah. It's a good time. <laughs> they are, are, they are and Ray talk about the oil thing. He's pretty shitty to Ray in this part. Yeah. He's like, what do you know about oil? Yeah. I'd be like, um, fuck you, JR. I wish they could yeah. say fuck you back then. Or TV. Like, what does a cowboy know about crude oil? <laughs> it's like, dick. Um, I know what it looks like when it's not supposed to be um, being pumped. Like, you know? <laughs> Right, right. But I yeah, think I no, wouldn't even know what oil is, aside from grease. Yeah, like black. <laughs> but uh, where are we? Um, Jack Jay and Ali talk about Garrison. Something about 
they talk about like they declared him dead and they don't know they they're not sure what he wants or whatever and she's saying how she felt guilty for declaring him dead dude he was gone for 40 fucking years like what are you talking about <laughs> well it was like the yeah it was the inheritance Basically thing dead. so like she was talking about she was talking about at the time um because according to jock as well because jock backs her up with some of the uh because of the money stuff uh the ranch was obviously in trouble mm -hmm. and for them to be able to actually do what they wanted needed to do apparently um ellie needed control of it and garrison had obviously been missing for a while by that point so they had to declare him dead in order for her to have the control over the ranch essentially and jock's money and right. stuff like that um basically paid for sprucing it up like getting it out of debt yeah jr so, calls yeah. um jr calls jeb and willie joe and tells them about the oil puddle he's not mm -hmm. happy about it because they were supposed to not leave any mark that they were there dummies um, which is surprising because they, I thought they'd be good about that too, because they know they're being shady, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Garrison and Ellie talk about the past. <laughs> Ellie wants to give him South work back. Mm. Jack says it was in his blood, set, sweat and tears to save the ranch. Jack, um, Jack says she's overstepping her place. <laughs> which is the wrong Ellie thing. Goes, Ellie, well, you know, she hardly fights for things you know what i mean like she should have fought for gary she didn't so well, at least she's fighting for this and these scenes are how we see what happens when she does and this is the first time she doesn't give it's not it's the You're first right. time we see we we don't see her give in you know right, right. She, and i think to my i thought this scene was very indicative of the type of crap that she would have to put up with every single goddamn time that she wanted to you know so it's That's that thing true, yeah you know it's that thing of like um choose your battles and but this time because it's obviously hit her in her head in her heart because it's her brother i love the way she chastises jerry absolutely deserves oh, it oh for sure yeah for the sure. Way he, he always it. deserves it yeah he does really, <laughs> so really yeah. and jock it was like you don't decide what you uh was it you don't decide the direction of viewing businesses and you don't decide what we do or do not keep you know i'm still the head of this household and then yeah. she just she just diminishes it by saying, "Well, I've asked them over for uh, for lunch tomorrow. Do I need to?" <laughs> yeah. And he yeah, just yeah. storms. And I'm like, well, "I like that. You deserve it." <laughs> like, yeah. But I do think it's one of those things. Um, like, JR I seems to agree. think Kathy. Oh no! Oh, I was just going to say I agree with a lot of what we say and like what we joke about with Ellie that she's kind of not always the best advice giver and not the best sort of mother. But I also think that there are these moments where we do see why she sort of keeps quiet yeah so jr thinks kathy is behind it because like she's a beautiful woman and she thinks that that him and gareth or her and gareth center together the same um, so kathy and garrison come to lunch jr and jr and kathy go end up going for a walk um he basically says right up front what's going you know what he thinks and then she says you disgust me and walks away <laughs> she'll even tell him anything <laughs> they are confront garrison i like garrison said you train this one well jock <laughs> um uh, he says that you want to fight you got it yeah um she yells at jr and she says you what does she say like you run like you run you uh you run you in oil well but you do not run, yeah run me and then like storms off yeah good shit um bobby and pam go to see garrison kathy tells them she's actually his nurse and that he is dying which we all suspected i'm like you yeah know. Which kind as of if sucks. you couldn't like, wait, he keeps alluding to the stages of emotion that he's in i'm like oh right. it's, you know. Like, you it know. just sucks like you you just find out your brother's alive but dying like it's ridiculous <laughs> a little bit yeah. um they mentioned a charlie waters he goes charlie waters goes to see jr and apparently he was on the crew he's the one that saw it or it was, so, okay, i don't so, know what his um, situation is okay so this thing was is that uh the little subplot throughout the episode because we obviously we've already mentioned that jock and ray have noticed the oil thing 
Ray goes into town and talks to a mate of his that um, runs around with all the oil boys, like all the drilling, all the guys who work on the sites. And he's just like, can you keep an ear open and without letting anybody know I'm asking to see if, um, you know, who's been on South Fork? Well, the person who knows about it and has spoken to Ray, uh, sorry, who has info and tells Ray's mate is someone who also decided to run to JR and tell him that Ray was asking. Uh, yeah. So it's like, it's the, so the guy who the go between uh, found that has the info that Ray wants is the guy who went to JR, not the actual guy that Ray went to. All right. Right. <laughs> um, so they have a family meeting. She asked, she asked Garrison to move in. Mm. Um, Everything seems cool with it. Ellie and Garrison uh, walk in the stables and he screams, it's good to be home. And, the yeah. and you know, and then that's the last we see of Garrison. So I guess he dies five minutes later because a week later he ain't there. He's not there. So, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, this was such a missed opportunity. I feel like they could have had like a five episode arc with Garrison, you know, I'll like them through and I would have been a better with it than one. I would have liked to, to see, you know, some struggle, you know, like a little something. Yeah. Whatever. I think that that was their little get, get out. So to, so, so they didn't have to, I think that's why they were like, oh yeah, he's dying. You know, like immediately he's dying. Yeah, like it's just crazy. But whatever. I guess he died yeah. happily in his bed. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um so uh episode fifteen is called For Love of Money, right? Yes. Sue Ellen's mom calls. Um yeah. we already kind of get the uh the feeling that her mom something ain't right with her. She talks about coming to South Fork. Sue Ellen's like, I don't want you here, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, um, I have. I did make note that Pam and Cliff, like, were like hanging around or whatever. They were. She. He was at the store getting a suit fitted for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something or tailored. Um, but that was uh, just like one little part. I don't even know why I wrote it, but anyway. Um, I was just just so, about the fact that Cliff was gone for a meeting. That was all that was. So we have Sue Ellen meets with the ladies. Um, and this is Fern Fitzgerald as Marilee Stone's first episode. I actually made a note of that too. I'm like, we're audience's intro to Mary Lee. <laughs> Mary Lee. Um, and she has brown hair in this. I guess she goes blonde yeah. like relatively soon, I think, or whatever. Yeah, it's not um, long. It's like a season, yeah. I think. And uh Cliff has, oh, I put, I didn't know who the guys were, so I put, Cliff has a meeting with dudes about a position. This is your shit. Uh, do you know what's going on? Okay. <laughs> okay, so they, don't, they seemingly don't really go into who the actual men are, just men of influence. Um, and they are in charge of setting up, uh, I think it is the very, what is used later quite often in plots, the um, Office of Land Management. So they're setting up this bureau that's supposed to evaluate and um, sign the dot, like yet veto, uh, sorry, yes and no on major development, land developments within the state. And they want Cliff to do it. Cliff is just like, okay, what's the catch? And cause there's always a catch. And the catch is, is they want to completely redevelop South Dallas, which I presume by the sound of this is a heavily urbanized and populated low income area um, that, they see as a b bit of a shit stain on the city. It doesn't look good, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they want to redevelop it, rezone it, and resell it to people who uh, have money. So right. For millions of dollars, people, right? Yeah. So they would need the Office of Land Management to sign that shit. And Cliff is like, actually, what did I say? I wrote it down. Um, that's what it was. He's like, um, you know, this... Uh, he says something like, um, you want me to sell out? And the uh, um, mustachioed fellow is, expediency is not selling out, Mr. Barnes. It's one hand washing another. And I love this. Cliff's just like, well, I'm not quite sure my hands are that dirty. There mm -hmm. is some little dialogue, like bits of dialogue that are just yeah. so perfectly phrased in the show. I always thought that was one of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just perfectly so they framed. Basically, agreed. Because right now, Cliff's not like a shady motherfucker, but he's no. basically, you know, they're swaying him. They want him to be a shady motherfucker, basically. Yeah. I guess they need like a leader. And they, well, they reject him. They reject, he rejects it and storms <laughs> it. And they're just like, we'll give him some time, you know? He rejects them. Yeah. 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 Give him, give him about 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, so Sue Ellen sees JR when she's out with her ladies and so does her ladies they're like oh if I didn't know he was in Austin I would think that was JR Ewing with that blonde hoe yeah I just made that yeah, part know, up so but she did say something along those lines <laughs> yeah well like Sue Ellen did just spend like the last like a scene prior just prattling on about how happy her and JR were being pregnant and like oh you know like he you know he takes his job still so seriously you know he was he's over in austin right now yeah. like all this dumb shit yeah jr comes home uh so ellen's drinking drinking pregnant that's good she's pissed she says he embarrassed her um she's, and it's stop. she's like change your lifestyle she threatens to leave he says i'm not going to change so and we are. <laughs> yes, flat out, I am not going to change, and right. you're going to. Um, <laughs> so she goes to Cliff because she needs somebody that cares. He kind of seems like he's pushing her away a little bit. They, they're kind, you know, they're. I feel like they both don't know exactly. Like they feel like they're both using each other, which they both kind of are, but they both care about each other. It's really weird. Very complicated. I think. I actually um, think at this, point it's more about the affair at this point. Because, like, the baby pregnancy has already come out. Um, you know, they've already sort of talked about the sort of trap that they're in with the baby, If you know, whether right. it's JR's or not. Um, I honestly think that they are doing that resist and then falling into it again, you know? Um, yeah, and, yeah. I think, and I think that they sort of, I think that's, yeah, I always, always thought this episode was quite sad. <laughs> like, it, yeah. it is, it is. It's really sad. I'm a big Cliff and... Um, I, I I like Cliff and Sue Ellen together. Um, I you know she I feel like they need each other and they work well together. But it's sad. She's just sad, and that's predominantly yeah. the reason why she's she's sad. And he makes her right. feel good, and she starts to care or think yeah. she cares. She needs somebody to make her feel good. Nobody else does. Yeah, it's really really sad. Um, so yeah, he's he's like he's like you're playing with my emotions. She says. Uh, mm. I'm along late. the lines like, uh, I may not need you after tomorrow, but tonight I need you. And I guess they fuck. I don't really know. This goes away from that. Well, she is undressing him. Um, so we have JR goes to Sue. JR goes to Sue Ellen's mom's house. Um, her mom seems all sweet and whatever. Kristen comes down. And I don't know if you know who this Kristen is. She's Her name's Colleen Camp. And she was in like some big movies here. Um, yeah. Uh, Valley Girl and the movie Clue, which is one of my favorite movies from the eighties. If you've never seen it, you need to see it. It's a great I movie. Haven't. I haven't. I should check it out. It's great. It's really yeah. great. So anyway, um, they talk about going to South Fork. They really want to go to South Fork. Like I don't understand why exactly. <laughs> like it's not that great. They have a cute uh, house. Their house is cute. It's just that stupid networking thing. Like her mother, their mother. Oh my lord, that woman. You know, like she reminds me honestly of the way sort of aristocratic mothers are sort of written or kind of were back in the monarch, uh, like the feudal days, where like you know, if your daughter didn't, and if your daughter didn't marry someone of influence, you were literally in the street. You could potentially just be in the street, struggling or dead. You know, right. like. I get it that these things were still kind of a concern back then, but her mother reminds me of like a feudal mother, like a feudal yeah. era. It's full she's on. Brutal. Like she's full on. Yeah. And uh, Sue Ellen packs her bags. Bobby sees her. This is kind of where the Bobby Sue Ellen relationship starts, like as a like a really good friendship. Yeah. Um, she's like, you care. Uh, it's been mm. seven years and you never cared before. <laughs> yeah, I always felt like you were just someone I said hello. You, was, I was just someone to say hello to. And Bobby, right. yeah, and he's, he's like, like well, you, don't you yeah, you don't make it easy. <laughs> um, she says she's leaving, and she basically says the baby made things worse. Where yeah. he's like, you know, sometimes babies help. 
I feel like they never help, but whatever. Hey Sam, I feel like he's talking um, to Miss Ellie. Like Bobby tells JR when he gets home that Sue Ellen rolled out. Um, he's like, "Take care of your wife, and I'll take care of mine." Then he puts a mm-hmm. tail on Sue Ellen. Um, she gets to her mom's well, house. Uh, he doesn't just put the tail on Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen leaves. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Is this before or after Jock has come in and chatted him? Because like I remember that Jr. goes full on after Jock comes in and chats him. No, that's after this part. I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Never yeah. Mind. So I. You know, so this is where. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he puts a tail on Sue Ellen. She gets to her mom's house. She, um, she mentions to her mom, um, she, she's like, you, you worked hard to turn me into the perfect wife for JR. Um, she tells, <laughs> she says that they had an affair and they don't seem to care. Kristen and uh, the mama. They don't. They don't. They're like, uh, you just stay with him because he's like rich and he's powerful. Like, duh. This is what, this but is I do I mean like the mom moment with her because Sue Ellen's like maybe I shouldn't have come here, mm. and uh, she's like, uh, well, we may not agree, but you know, I want you to stay. Like uh, I thought that was kind of sweet, like the one sweet moment that we have with this mother, probably ever. Yeah, she does stick. Look, she does stick by her girls. That's not the issue. It's that she doesn't. She's just guide them to please them, please men. Like there's nothing really more than that. And as we, as the yeah. show goes on, you do see how how full on that's affected Swell and as like her character develops. Obviously, we'll get to that as time goes on. But I think a lot of shit that she goes through is because of things like this. It's not just Jr. It's the start that she had as well. And I'm, I think Swellen even makes mention of that a few times over the years. So she calls to meet Cliff, and then that's the end scene. Um, Jock comes to see JR. This is what you were talking about. Yeah. And he's very mad that Sue Ellen is not home. And he says, do whatever you got to do. I told Miss Ellie that you're going to work it out. You work it the fuck out. Don't make me a liar. <laughs> and that line there, that line there, don't make me a liar. The way he just chastises him. JR's like, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. That's where you see JR go into please daddy mode, you know, please the parents mode, which is just mm-hmm. such a massive driver for his character. It is like such a massive drive on his character. Sue Ellen tells Cliff that she's leaving JR partly because of Cliff. Um, mm. She wants to know how he feels. He's not giving her anything. Like she's like, he's like, he wants her, he wants her, but he doesn't want to be used to beat JR. Um, mm. And he said, we're going to try to make it, make it work, whatever. And they hug. Uh, Dan comes to see Jr. Who that Dan's the PI. Yeah. Um, she found or he found out that Sue Ellen has been having a cliff uh, an affair with Cliff for months. Yeah, and it's predominantly the fact that it's Cliff that sets him off. Like he doesn't <laughs> like the affair, absolutely, but Cliff because yeah. that's when get that deep threat. He's like, I think we're gonna have to do something like, about old Vance. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have Pam has great hair in this episode. <laughs> she did. I actually um, did. Pam drops off know. Cliff's suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, she pries about a new lady. I guess she senses something or smells something. Uh, um, she finds yeah, she... Sue Ellen's scarf. She's like, uh, why is Sue Ellen, what, what was Sue Ellen yeah. doing here? Yeah, she um, sniffs it. And she's like, that's and then, uh, Basically, they go back and forth. They go back and forth a little bit, and he tells Pam that get the hell out. <laughs> so I'll let you talk about when Jr. goes to Cliff's office. Yeah, it's just like yeah. a big con- conflict. Conflict. They have their their full uh their con- they have their confrontation. I got the word out. I got the word out. And yeah, <laughs> and it's, yeah. I actually, I you know, it's always good to see them you know, have their fights and everything like that. Like I can't. It's. It's a good uh, sort of predecessor to how full on it actually gets between these two. Currently, it's kind of like words and threats, you know, and like, oh, you slept with my woman, yeah. sort of. Thing. And yeah, I yeah, it's always just great. <laughs> um, he basically says, if you want money and power, you're not going to get it with Sue Ellen. You're basically committing um, career suicide for yourself. Yeah. Um, and it kind of brings them back so like you know he had to pick sue ellen or or power basically yeah 
Because with the crazy. job, with the job, he's able to make a difference, and he's also able able to tackle the Ewings, despite the fact that he'd have to compromise himself. And um, earlier on in the episode, we get these cute little moments with Swell and, and Cliff, where they actually, for a moment, decide to have a go of it, and then Jr. just comes in and, right. yeah, and like so, he does. And, yeah, they, yeah, Jr. goes back to. Su- Ellen's mom's. Uh, did you ever notice Jr.'s face with her mom? Like when she like, and I, I had that she's kissing her, kissing his ass, and he has like this look. Like he does this look with his eyes, like a like a roll eye roll or something like this. Bitch. <laughs> he <laughs> knows just, what she's all about. He knows exactly what she's funny. all about. Also, that weird conversation between him and Kristen when he's waiting for Suella. Yeah. I was like, ah, uh, look, I love Larry Hagman, but he looks like such a creep in that scene while she's all bent over that table. I'm like, ugh. It's so weird to watch. Oh, Kristen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he was already... We, yeah, I forgot to mention that. When we saw when first met, met Kristen, he was already checking her ass out. So, whoops. Yeah. Um, so, Sue Ellen comes down. Um, then he's like, come home with me, whatever. She brings up, He brings up, like, like... He threatens, basically, to... Uh, abort her baby, like take her to a hospital and force an abortion, which is fucked up. Yeah. Um, she ends up whatever. She goes to Cliff. She goes. She thinks that you know her and Cliff are gonna try to make it. Yeah. Um, and he says he has to play the other man's game, which Jr. pointed out. Which he doesn't say Jr. pointed it out, but and then we have Jr. waiting in his car. Well, that's that one thing with that whole confrontation between Cliff and Jr. is that Cliff is really aware of the of the power imbalance. Even if he was to take Sue Ellen, there's nothing he could really do to stop Jr. doing anything. So that's right. kind of what pushes him to take that job. He's forced to, yeah. Ugh. So J, um, Jr. is waiting. He says, "Get in," and then he's a dick, and he's like, "Oh, I have like meet- meetings tonight, so don't wait up." And I'm just like, "That motherfucker." Yeah, such so such a crutch ending. It's just like, and you just kind of feel Sue Ellen, the the cr- like the weight just hits Sue Ellen a bit. Like you do as the audience. I just, he's such a prick. I know. Um, Cliff calls the dude uh, Mr. Maxwell. I finally got his name. <laughs> and I basically, <laughs> and basically accepts the job and will do whatever he wants. He says, "Yeah, the end." <laughs> And this is also the perfect lead in to, I think, the last sort of, uh, what was it? It's episode 16 to 24. So, like, the last eight episodes here. Uh, I think those, the two ones that we watched today, like those last two, four and five, I think they um, do lead in for the rest of the season quite well and establish quite a few really cool things. Yeah. Into the um, first or the second season cliffhanger or whatever. Yeah, and we get that uh, we get the red file stuff coming up um, next, um, and then um, the build into uh, Sue Ellen's uh, birth, like a birth. Beg your pardon, yeah, John yeah. yeah. There's also right. um, yeah. anything about these last five episodes that you have to say before we roll out. Um, only that we see Sue Ellen drinking yada yada yada, but I would say that this episode here is like when. She, like knowing that it's done with Cliff, um, that she doesn't really know who baby daddy is at the moment and yada, yeah. yada, yada. Yeah. It act, this is when I think Sue Ellen starts to properly spiral down. And she does. Think, and and yeah. you got to remember, she still does, does care for Cliff. So there's still that into play and Cliff cares for her. So there's still that situation. It's still years of Cliff and her kind of still having that remnants of what they had. There's still years of that to go. Because I know I remember there's a season finale where, where that happens with something big like that, but we'll get into that eventually. <laughs> well, this episode will wrap up. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us today with Queers and Soaps. Uh, follow us on all the socials. Subscribe, like, comment. Let us know if you want us to do any other soaps that you're interested in. If you like what we're doing, whatever. <laughs> and have a good night. See you later, guys. Mm-hmm.